Solid Edge has set the standard for streamlining 3D design. An ST5 multi-body modeling increases flexibility and significantly advances the repurposing of imported data. Here we'll focus on a powerful combination of multi-body and synchronous technology while creating a sheet metal support bracket and filter mount for a heat sink and fan assembly. First we'll import an assembly. In ST5 we can import the entire assembly into a solid edge part file, the result being either a single design body or a number of bodies. This facilitates representation of the purchased item which needs to be referred to during the design of the surrounding components. In many situations, the designer is only interested in the whole purchased item, not the individual parts comprising that item. In this demonstration, we need to build brackets supporting the heat sink and fan, so we don't need to be concerned about each individual piece. We've imported it into a part file and it was merged into a single body during the import. In SD5, a part of sheet metal file can contain any number of bodies, a body being defined as a single solid or a series of disjoint solids. Here we'll add a new sheet metal body to the file. Note that the initial heat sink body is going to take on a ghosted appearance. This means it is inactive and the body is now active. Any work done from this point is being performed on the new body. Since it is a sheet metal body, we'll set the proper material and gauge for the bracket. The use of multiple bodies in a single sheet metal file allows for powerful cross-referencing. Topology such as faces, edges, and key points of inactive bodies can be selected as the basis for new body construction. Sketches and dimensions can be based off of inactive bodies. Also, Live Rules takes into account both active and inactive elements. The user has direct interaction with inactive bodies. In the demonstration, we'll construct our support bracket using the inactive heat sink fan. First we selected an inactive face to create a reference plane onto which we'll build a new profile. Then we'll dimension the new profile using the edges of the inactive body. Using the smart dimension tool, we'll select the side face of the heat sink and relate it to the profile. When the profile is complete, we'll create a contour flange. Note that we didn't select the contour flange command, rather we'll select it uh, from the radial menu. Solid Edge offers many view manipulation tools like the look at face command. Here we'll take advantage of synchronous technology and live rules to stretch the heat sink and move the bracket. Note that as we drag it is moving symmetrically thanks to a symmetric live rule. Live rules is the proprietary technology that automatically preserves the design intent of the engineer. Next we'll stretch the width of our bracket to make it uh, just slightly wider. We can click and drag or we can key in a precise dimension. Design bodies can become individual parts or sheet metal files when published. All active and inactive bodies are available to be published. Construction bodies do not go through the publishing conversion, and we'll do more on publishing in a few minutes. In our demonstration, we don't want the heat sink to be published, therefore we're changing it to a construction body. As mentioned earlier, we still have the ability to directly interact with all bodies in the file, whether they be active or inactive design bodies or even construction bodies. All synchronous modification technology, including live rules functionality, can be used on all bodies within the file. This lets you take advantage of the entire set of bodies while incorporating changes. As always, the power of synchronous functionality is available for modifications as well as for sheet metal feature addition. Synchronous sheet metal technology retains the intelligence to automatically construct flanges through direct interaction with the end faces or edges. Synchronous technology is powerful, fast, and effective, removing the shackles of history-based functionality. Solid Edge's smart dimensioning tools allows us to easily center the flange on the bracket.
by locking the dimension, this is going to keep that dimension from changing as we move it to the center by keying in two millimeters. We'll break the sharp corners on our bracket to make it safer for the end user of the bracket. Intelligent Placement Tools allows us to add two mounting holes to the side of the bracket. We can align with the midpoint of the flange to keep it on center. With just a simple keystroke, we can even add a dimension to precisely place the hole in the correct location. Again, we'll lock this dimension so we'll always keep these two holes 10 millimeters apart. And then we'll add one more dimension to the top of the bracket to put it in the correct location. Next, we need to get all of these features that we just placed on the other side of the bracket. Solid Edge offers a mirror command to copy these features to the other side. Our bracket is taking shape. But now let's say the requirement has changed. We now need this bracket to be made into two pieces so that part of it can be used to hold an air filter for the fan. We'll offset a construction plane that we'll use to split this part into two bodies. In ST5, a design body can be divided into two or more bodies using variations of traditional Boolean methods. Boolean operations on design bodies retain all resultant bodies. In a multi-body workflow, one of these bodies will remain active and the other set to inactive. In this case, we're splitting the bracket into two bodies. We'll rename the body to describe its function and make it the active body. Now watch again as we take advantage of synchronous technology to begin to design the filter holder body. We'll stretch the end of the flange to match a key point on the hanger bracket. Solid Edge offers many process specific features in sheet metal. Next thing we want to add is a special hem that's going to hold the filter. Here you can see the different types of hems that we can create and you can even save uh, a setting for a particular hem, in this case the, uh, the filter holder. We'll add a dimension to control the width of the new bracket that we're designing. And again, we'll use the symmetric option so that we can move the we can make the bracket wider in both directions. Notice here that we can select two edges and pull two flanges at the same time. We want to cut away this uh, part of this flange to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Solid Edge offers strong sketching tools. So as we drag a line and click, we can hit the A on the keyboard, which automatically takes us into a symmetric arc. We can select that endpoint and drag and change the shape of the sketch. This creates regions, and in Solid Edge, you simply select those regions and drag through the part to create a cut. Again, we're going to need to break the corners to make it safer for the end user. Now we'll switch focus back to the hanger bracket and we'll make it the active body because now we want to add features to the hanger bracket. 
we'll to pull two small flanges on the hanger bracket to add strength. Now these two brackets are going to be permanently assembled, so we actually need to make them intersect each other and then add some features to lock them together. Some other process specific commands that we have for sheet metal include a gusset. Gussets are often used in corners to provide strength. Once again, you can create the gusset on the fly or you can use one that you've already have saved. There's options for fit, fill, and fixed spacing between the gussets, and here we just need to place one gusset right in the center. Another process specific command is a bead. To create a bead, we need to create a sketch. Here we're going to center a sketch on our bracket. We can build relationships between the different elements. Here we're going to center the, uh, the sketch using its midpoint and align it to uh, the radius on the gusset. Again, like the other process specific commands, the bead we can specify on the fly or we can use one that we've saved. In this case we have one saved. Now in order for those two brackets to intersect we need to create a cut in the filter holder. So we're going to actually take advantage of the faces of the hanger bracket to do that. We can provide an offset from the faces of the hanger bracket just to provide a little clearance so that we can put them together. Again, using the region, we'll create the cut. The next feature that we need to add is actually the locking feature. Solid Edge offers the ability to create feature libraries for uh, different features that you use over and over. This locking feature is one that we use commonly and so we already have it saved as a feature in the feature library. So we just need to bring it into our model and precisely place it. Using the steering wheel it makes it very easy to align this to the middle of our filter holder. Just pick up a midpoint of the edge. Right now this is construction so we just need to turn it to, uh, to part of the model by attaching it to the sheet metal part. And here you can see the two small flanges are bent in opposite directions which is going to lock these two things together. So when someone buys this part they're going to get both. It's going to be two bodies but it's one part number uh, in the bill of material. So now let's go ahead and show the heat sink in, the, in combination with our bracket. Again, using synchronous technology, we can change the shape of our bracket, these hanging features, and notice that synchronous technology works between the different bodies, and that both sides are moving because of a coplanar relationship. So now we'll go ahead and save our multi-body uh, design. Now if you weren't the person who designed this, you wouldn't necessarily know which features belong with which body. Solid Edge offers some tools to help us with that. We have the option to show the body name, which will append each body name or each feature name with the body name. We can also right click on a body and say show me which ones are the features that belong to that body and they highlight in green. Design bodies can, be, can become individual part or sheet metal files when published. Publishing bodies creates individual part and or sheet metal files. All active and inactive bodies are available to be published. Here we're going to convert the hanger bracket and the filter mount bodies into unique sheet metal files. We'll also create an assembly file at the same time.
once published, will open the newly created hanger bracket filter holder assembly. From there, each sheet metal piece can be worked on in the context of the sheet metal environment. So here we're going to open the hanger bracket to create a flat pattern. As you can see, we have the individual part opened up in the sheet metal environment. Solid Edge is very powerful in that we can flatten the sheet metal file for manufacturing. Notice that the flat pattern gives us the overall blank size automatically. Finally, we'll save the individual files and the assembly that we created and get back to our multi-body file. Keep in mind these files are linked back to the multi-body file. Let's take a look at a drawing that was created from the finished uh, multi-body file. Here you see the assembly of the two parts and you can see that the construction body, the heat sink, is is uh, in a phantom. We can easily document the assembly of the two components. In order to manufacture the sheet metal bracket or each bracket individually, you need to know how it is bent and you need to know what all the dimensions are to cut this out of a blank piece of sheet metal. Introduction of multi-body modeling greatly enhances the flexibility of synchronous design. Not only are you free from history-based restrictions and rules, but you can work in the context of an imported assembly within a single part file, creating as many bodies as needed to fulfill your design requirements.